Welcome everyone to Charts Focus 1, where we teach you how to work hard and trade smart. Let's go ahead and start off with the markets. Now, I want to talk about the elephant in the room that is, last week on Thursday, we had a historical reversal move in the stock market. On the backdrop of negative economic news, specifically CPI data. And CPI data came in hotter, way hotter than expected for the month of September. Now remember guys, gas prices went down on average across the nation in the US, which should have, or we thought it should have, aided in the decrease in overall inflation. And food prices came down as well, slightly. Now I talk more about this on the market summary in the CFO Swing and Watch newsletter. So make sure you guys read that first before you watch this video. So with that in mind, right, you have to wonder why we had such a large reversal move up. Because on Thursday, before the market was open, BMO, before market open, we were down, I believe, to my memory, uh, we were down over 1%. Right, I believe almost 2%. But we closed almost 3% higher. And we closed specifically at 2.64%, which resulted in us forming this bullish engulfing candlestick, or we can also call it an outside day candlestick. Now, you guys might be scratching your head wondering, wait a second, what is an outside day candlestick? Candlestick. I've heard of a bullish engulfing candlestick, but I've never heard of an outside day candlestick. And if you guys are wondering, well, is it the complete opposite of an inside day candlestick? Well, you're 100% correct on that thought because that exactly that's exactly what it is, right? Uh, as simple as I can say it, it's a opposite candlestick of an inside day candlestick. And it's the complete opposite with the functionality of it as well. <laughs> I mean, what more can I say, right? Um, so this outside day candlestick is showing a potential reversal in the markets compared to an inside day where it shows continuation, right? So that's a complete opposite, right? Where the inside day is showing a continuation pattern and a outside day is showing a reversal pattern. Now they're both potential continuations and potential reversals because nothing is 100% in the markets. Now, uh, this outside day candlestick, what is it specifically? Well, an outside day candlestick completely engulfs the previous day's price range. So if you take a look with your naked eyes, you guys can just observe this as well. Thursday's candlestick is completely larger and encompasses Wednesday's small and tiny looking candlestick. And so if you take a look at the opposite of an outside day candlestick, an inside day, for example, two weeks ago, when we had this little tiny micro bull flag forming, we had an inside day candlestick. And it's the complete opposite where we have the previous day's candlestick completely encompassing or engulfing the inside day's candlestick's price range. So obviously, this is also showing the fact that an inside day does not 100% show a continuation. And for this example, a continuation to the upside because, well, we had a failure of this reversal as we completely moved lower and broke lower and erasing the reverse reversal that we made in the first week of October. So I'm not going to say that this engulf, bullish engulfing candlestick or outside day candlestick is a surefire way of knowing that their market reversal is here. The market reversal, right? Because we've been seeing uh, potential market reversals for months, right? For over nine months now. Uh, we've been waiting for a market reversal. However, we just kept on erasing 
the market reversals. So I'm not going to be uh, you know, trapped in that thinking anymore until I'm able to see the specific conditions that I've outlined in the market summary. So again, this gives you another reason why you guys have to read the market summary first before coming into the technical analysis video, right? So those two, uh, I guess, reasons that I need to see on the chart uh, before I am able to determine a market bottom is in, okay, I'm not going to assume that this will be the market bottom from Thursday, right? So that is my stance on, a very simple stance on Thursday's price action. Now, I do believe that we can continue higher uh, based off of this nice candlestick because whenever the market starts to show signs of a reversal, we tend to get this very, very large volume days and this very, very wide price range on, the, on that one single day. And, uh, you know, based on the technicals here, uh, we have hit a new 2022 low. And that's a fact. And we've been continuously making new lows since we finished September, right? And it hasn't even been uh, the halfway point uh, for October. Well, now it is, but uh, we've made a new low last week. So uh, with this low here, uh, I will have to see uh, us moving away from this new October low and new yearly low if we want to see any type of a base forming on SPY so that we're able to uh, move out of this huge downtrend that we've been, we've been seeing for this entire year. Now, for this week, uh, with that in mind, right, with that in mind now, this, that mac macro perspective on the markets, uh, I want to take a look at this 348.50 level because this might be our new line in the sand. Now, where did I get this new level? Where in the hell did I get this 348.50 level? Well, that's a good question because this level dates back to late 2020, right? So there's still buyers appearing in uh, this 348.50 level, which were pre uh, they're, they're, they're present in, uh, in this uh, price action in November 2020. So this is when we were making this large bull flag, right? And also, uh, if you don't want to identify as a bull flag, just you guys can identify as a wedge chart pattern. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're seeing some good support coming in around 345 and 348.50. And once we're able to break above 348.50, we just completely shot up into new all-time highs, which leads me to believe that there are still buyers present in this level, which is the reason why we bounced off of this level so well. Now, I want you guys to make sure you guys keep an eye on this level in the new uh, in the near term future because this is the new line in the sand level for me, um, and it could potentially be retested once more. Now, if you do break below three forty eight, then we will head straight into three forty five, and uh, once we do that, well, there isn't much support left. So, with the price action on Friday now it got me a little bit worried because we retested the 21 SMA once more. And we've been retesting the 21 SMA a couple of times this year, and we've been straight up rejecting it. Now, I love the fact, though, that we've been seeing a higher frequency of a retest of the 21 SMA. And that's interesting because that's also going to aid in the future for a market reversal once we're able to get back above and stay above both of my 10 and 21 SMAs. Now, if you guys have been with CFO for a long time, you know that the 10 and 21 is my momentum pair for the SMAs, and they're very important for the short-term future. So on the short-term perspective, uh, we're still heavily biased to the downside based on solely SMAs. So this rejection off of the 370.50 resistance level that we've been watching uh, since the end of September here and the start of October, we coincided with this resistance level and this 21 SMA. So this got me thinking that, okay, well, this entire reversal day on Thursday could be a potential, uh, well, gone, 
<laughs> as we can see a complete erasure of this gain that we saw on Thursday this week. Right, we can continue to move lower based on what we saw on Friday. Right, and if you guys follow uh, Cheddar Flow on, on, on Twitter, I haven't talked to him in a long time, uh, but uh, he showed that there were tens of millions of put option contracts that were opened on Friday. So that has that's something that you guys need to be cautious of, especially if you're slightly bullish like me coming into this new trading week, right? So make sure you guys are watching out this week for this 360 hold number level because we tried to hold this level intraday on Friday. And if you take a look at the 15 minute time frame, right? I actually love how we acted on Friday because this is simple uh, textbook consolidation where we see initial movement lower, where we digest the move that we had, this impulsive move up higher that we had on Thursday. And then we had the simple consolidation where we saw that sideways move and then a slight movement down, sideways again, and a slight movement down, and a sideways once more. And then we closed on Friday with a slight movement down. So this is a very typical consolidation price action, which leads me to believe that we are still are able to find some sort of bullishness into this new upcoming week. So make sure to look out for this 360 level because it is a significant intraday resistance level as shown here in the past and it was used as a level of significant support. So once we're able to break above 360, then there's a possibility that we can retest 367, which is the next significant intraday hourly level on the hourly time frames. Okay, not just in that one hour, but all on the hourly time frames. And once we're able to get past that, then we should be able to retest the daily level of 370.50. So hopefully that was a very, very good and deep breakdown on the overall market. Now let's go ahead and start off with our first equity name for this week, Netflix. So Netflix has earnings this week on Tuesday after hours. Now, why am I choosing Netflix? Well, because number one, I'm not going to be playing earnings. I'm not going to be gambling my hard earned money away. And number two, there will be an opportunity after earnings is over and we are able to play the earnings reaction when the market is actually open. Okay, not the overnight reaction, but the actual reaction when the market is open. So Netflix here will also give us a potential trade tomorrow on Monday before uh, Tuesday, right? On earnings after hours. You guys can also have a swing opportunity between Monday and overnight into Tuesday. So you have multiple opportunities here where you don't need to FOMO for your missing out on the actual uh, earnings reaction move that we have after hours, right? There are multiple opportunities here, so don't gamble your hard earned money away, especially your profits. So Netflix here, on a technical uh, analysis and perspective, uh, we are still holding this 230 level of support. Now this is the area where we were able to short last week uh, for a huge percentage gain. So if you guys haven't watched that video yet, uh, it's in my live stream recap watch list or playlist on YouTube. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, so Netflix here, uh, we are holding this 230. How do we know? Well, we closed exactly 0 0.00 to a T on the whole number level. So if we're able to bounce on this level tomorrow, then you can bet that we can long this a uh, uh, name at 230. And once we're able to pass 233.50, then we can retest this descending level of resistance that we've been kind of uh, uh, forming this uh, chart pattern to the downside. And uh, if we're able to continuously conform to this descending level of resistance, there is a possibility that we could be seeing a broadening descending channel here, right? Or just a simple descending channel. So this is inherently a bullish chart pattern heading into earnings. So who knows? The earnings might be a catalyst into a breakout on the technical chart here to the upside. Now, uh, I would say that a breakout would happen once you're able to cross above at least around 240, right? So make sure you guys keep an eye out on that level because if you do tend to, well, if you do uh, break out 
uh, after hours on, on earnings on Tuesday, then we can see a huge breakout after hours above 240. Now, if you guys want to day trade this name uh, tomorrow, we can have a nice bounce entry at 230, like I've given you guys, and you guys can take profits around 233 or 233.50. That's a great risk to reward ratio there if you guys are risking a dollar uh, to get in at 230 and exiting for a $3 plus reward, right? One to three risk to reward ratio. That's a great game plan. All right, so our second name is Tesla. Now, Tesla also has earnings this week, I believe, on Wednesday, <laughs> right? So uh, Tesla uh, will also be a, 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 a watch for me, especially after earnings, because I know there will be a play for Tesla after earnings because, well, price tends to get very, very volatile, which means there can be a multi-day opportunity for us to either swing or day trade, okay, either or. So Tesla here, uh, I focused on the weekly time frame, as you guys can see in the newsletter, because, well, we're heading towards a very, very significant psychological level of $200, and on the weekly time frame, this huge demand area, this 10-point range between 180 and 190. And, well, if we're able to reach this 180 to 190 level, this could be potentially a long-term uh, position for you all if you guys aren't in Tesla just yet. So if you guys want to grab and lap some shares up uh, when it's below that psychological $200 level, you guys should if we do see a retest of 180 or 190 or anything in between this 10-point range. So this is the reason why I gave you guys uh, these two different trades here, one short and one long, because, well, we have enough time for us to potentially see these two entries been taken, right? So you guys can take an entry below 204, which is below the low of the week. And last week's low was 204.16. And if we're able to break below that, then you are, you can be sure to see uh, the price hitting $200, right? And once we hit $200, you guys can quickly take profit and switch back over to $200 for a long, especially if you decide to bounce at that $200 level. And trust me, there will be buyers because it's a psychological level that people are looking at for uh, Tesla here. So uh, once we're able to ideally see this, these conditions happening, we should be potentially uh, having these conditions, okay? Uh, and this market action from Tesla uh, before earnings are here on Wednesday. So make sure you guys check that out because Tesla will be a great day trading name this week, even after earnings. All right, so the third name here is SEDG. So I'm carrying this name over from last week, and I've said this multiple, I've said this multiple times in the CFO Discord because of how I so, so love this name on the weekly time frame. So just to have a quick review, we're seeing a huge macro base, right? It's not even a bull flag anymore because we've been basing for nearly almost two years, right? And at this point, uh, we've allowed the weekly 200 SMA to catch up. And there is always an opportunity when we're seeing a 200 SMA catch up on the weekly time frame to the price because, well, uh, when, once we get very, very close, or once we actually retest the 200 SMA, we tend to get a huge run up like we did back in early 2019, right? Where we were so, so close to this 200 SMA on the weekly time frame, and back in uh, around March of 2019 as well. So this time around, we're actually retesting the 200 SMA, which can mean there's a potential uh, huge impulsive reaction from buyers, right? Because buyers will always, always step up on the 200 SMA on the weekly time frame. Now, mind you guys, that's a very, very large time frame. So, the reason why, the second reason why, or I guess the third reason why now, uh, that I want to see uh, this uh, trade here to the long side is that, well, we're also seeing the psychological $200 level, just like we saw in Tesla for SEDG, said G. So, uh, once we're able to uh, see a confirmation 
uh, movement higher above 200, that could be a very, very good entry for us to come back to the 220s and eventually 240s. That's my ultimate price target for SCDG for the next few upcoming weeks of potential reversal higher, right? So with SCDG here, I give you guys two entries, one uh, potential early entry and one confirmation entry. So don't forget that guys, whenever I give you guys two entries. The first one is an early entry, the second one is a confirmation entry. So our fourth one here is LI. So LI was a failed uh, uh, name here to look at on the bullish side, on the long side, because, well, for LI here, uh, we're looking at this really, really large macro descending channel. But guess what? We did not get a breakout to the upside because after, I believe on October 3rd, we saw a uh, uh, Lee uh, come out with better than expected delivery numbers, right? However, after making a nice gap up on October 4th, we just absolutely flushed. And uh, once I saw other Chinese names and other Chinese EV names specifically, Chinese names were losing strength again. And they, fall, they fell into weakness once more. And that's actually a pattern for Chinese names where we see uh, a pocket of strength and then we see this complete waterfall of weakness coming down and raining down on these Chinese names. So I want to play this time around the, the weakness on, on these Chinese names because they tend to move a lot lower after pockets of strength. So Lee here is also showing a very, very nice looking H pattern. If you guys can't see it, well, here it is, right? And H patterns are notor notoriously known to be very, very bearish chart patterns. And guess what? We've also hit a very significant level of support of $18.80-ish cents. But if you guys want to keep it simple, you can use the whole number level of 18.50 to use as an entry for a short. Now, if you guys want to short this name this week, you guys can potentially take profits around $17 or the line in the sand level of $16.80. So this is the critical line in the sand level before we start coming back down to the ultimate IPO lows, right? So if we break this level, as you guys see in the past as well, we tried to uh, stay above the $16 level, but we broke below it. And then once we saw a break below this line in the sand level, we saw a complete large reversal higher. And before uh, that large reversal higher, we've also had, as I've discussed in my previous uh, newsletters and in the previous uh, T TA videos, right? Technical analysis videos. LI has been making three times here, including the one that we're seeing right now, uh, big macro descending or falling wedge chart patterns, right? Descending channels or falling wedge chart patterns specifically. And so maybe, just maybe, this might be the move where we can come back down to $16, right? Or around 16.50, okay? And once we hit that, then we can see that huge reversal out of the failed descending channel that we're currently seeing right now, okay? So at, the, at some point, we'll see max pain for LI once more as we've seen in the past, right? So we're, we're waiting for that to happen. But as we're waiting for that to happen, we want to capitalize on the movement lower and on the overall Chinese market weakness. Oh, and also, <laughs> before I get to my next name, um, we have a death cross on the daily time frame where we have the 50 SMA crossing below the 200 SMA. Now, when I showed you guys this name for the first time, LI was not showing, I believe. Uh, a death cross just yet. If my memory is wrong, please correct me. So with this movement lower, we have finally had the uh, 50 SMA crossing lower on the 200 SMA. All right, our fifth name here is WMT, Walmart. So I already mentioned this to you guys last week on the CFO Discord because of how I loved, uh, how I love this, uh, uh, this daily chart pattern here. Now, what is this daily chart pattern? Well, it's just simply a descending level of resistance that Walmart has been following. And whenever I see this uh, descending level of resistance continuously pushing the price down, including 
the 200 SMA acting as a huge level of resistance, coinciding with this decent level of resistance, just leads me to believe that this could be a very, very good short. However, I am not going to uh, uh, forget the fact that this is a discount store name, right? Walmart is a so-called recession-proof stock. So don't be surprised if we completely negate these short entries here that I've given you under 130 and 128. Remember, the first one's early and the second one is a confirmation entry. Um, even if you do negate this, just remember that Walmart is a recession-proof stock, right? People will be continuously lapping up Walmart shares whenever they deem it to be very, very cheap. And so far, Walmart is and has been cheap throughout the entire year, right? Sure, we, we saw a huge increase, but right now we're seeing a very relatively cheap price compared to uh, the lows of 2021, right? And people have missed out on the run on Walmart in 2021's dip, right? An early, early uh, 2021's dip. So I would expect Walmart to at least find some support as it has been on this 128 level, which dates back to those lows of 2021, right? So if you're able to break below 128, 128. If you're able to completely reject um, all any type of buying, we should be able to come back down and slam back down to uh, this 124 level that I've been watching uh, since, well, summer of this year. So uh, Walmart here, we've rejected on Friday on all three major SMAs. Uh, and what are those major SMAs on the daily time frame? Well, the 10, 21, which is my momentum pair, and then the 50 SMA. So for the fact that we've rejected off of the 50 SMA, not able to close above it multiple times here, right? Just back to back here of relentless selling below the 50 SMA and closing below it can give you more confidence for a short trade to the downside for Netflix. All right, our last but not least name here is M. So I've also carried this name over from last week's newsletter because, well, it's simply so, so good looking on a technical perspective. So if I go back on the weekly time frame, look at this. We've been holding the 200 SMA for quite some time now, and we don't see any type of a death cross between the 50 and 200 on the weekly time frame. Now, obviously, you guys can say, wait a second, Andrew. Um, we've already had a death cross in the daily time frame. So why are you talking about not having one on the weekly time frame? Well, because I like to isolate the time frames between daily and weekly because weekly shows you the broader, bigger, longer term perspective compared to the daily time frame. So on the weekly time frame here, we're still seeing some very, very good strength in Macy's and M. And for the fact that we're able to hold uh, above the 200 SMA for multiple months at a time here, since uh, before summer started here, just tells me that, well, buyers are stepping up into this name, and we already know that Macy's have been uh, doing extremely well uh, restructuring their business operations and how they uh, are, are looking to operate in the future. Uh, because, well, as you guys already know, uh, you know, retail stores are basically dying out. It's a dying industry and dying sector. We've been seeing that with Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, JC Penny and I could just name on and on and on these huge retailers that were uh, basically popping off in the 90s and 80s, right? But they're dying off now. So Macy's here, I believe, uh, can have a foothold in the future because they're starting to act a little bit like Amazon, right? A as a retailer. So uh, I believe I've also given you guys a whole breakdown uh, uh, using fundamental analysis uh, months back, I believe back in. Uh, March of this year, I believe, when we started to make this base. Obviously, we failed this, but now we're making an even better chart pattern, a falling wedge chart pattern on a weekly time frame. So this is a lot cleaner than what we saw uh, back in March where we had this large consolidation base, which was nice, but it was very, very um, wicky and it wasn't showing uh, you know, a, a full trend breakout to the upside at, that we wanted. So this falling wedge here, on Friday, if you go back in the daily time frame, we tried to stay above eighteen dollars, but the market inhibit, inhibit, inhibited the uh, the breakout uh, potential here for Macy's. So I am still going to look out uh, for a breakout above eighteen dollars, even if the market inhibits the breakout above eighteen dollars. So 
once you're able to break out above $18, which is the uh, confirmation entry here of 18.10. Uh, we should be able to come back to $20 within weeks time. All right, so this is my ultimate price target before earnings, mind you, before earnings for Macy's. And for the short-term profit target for this week will be $19 because Macy's tends to move a lot percentage-wise every single day. Okay, now I know this has been a very, very long TA video, but I want to give you guys an in-depth review and on what I'm seeing on the overall markets and on these individual names. Uh, and I believe that I'm crossing the 30 minute mark uh, here for the video. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed everything that I've said so far uh, and make sure you guys are always, always having a game plan which consists of an entry, an exit, and a stop loss. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you for listening.